Hi guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about how to create a white border theme in your Instagram and then I kind of wanted to touch on whether it's the right thing for you and just to explain that it takes a lot of work to maintain it and just maybe so you could keep these things in mind before you embark on this journey. So a little bit of background about uh, me and my Instagram feed, what it's about. So I'm an artist and art historian. I do art tours in London and I paint. So a lot of my feed is basically either art that I've created or art that masters have created, which is kind of an issue sometimes because I just feel like having my artworks next to like a Monet it's just kind of doesn't work well together but you know you gotta do what you gotta do so the reason i chose uh, to even go this route and choose a white background theme is because i wanted to stand out because there's a lot of um, feeds on instagram that do art history or they post pictures of um, artworks and of course there's a lot of artists on uh, instagram so a way for me to kind of stand apart from these two groups was because I know I combined both of them but if you just look at my feed you just see different artworks and also you don't really see you see old art and my art and then you see some art events and so it just I feel like it allowed to bring some structure to my feed which otherwise might have not been there or you wouldn't see it right away unless you've known me or you know my content stuff like that so that's one of the best reasons to do a white border theme is to stand apart so uh, i do it in preview uh, you have to download preview you then uh, once you've downloaded you click to add photos and videos there it pulls up your camera roll and you can choose one to as many as you want to upload into the feed and preview you can use, uh, you don't just have to use it to get frames, you can actually use it as an editing tool, but most importantly it's really good to pre-plan your feed and planning your feed on Instagram is a really good way of just, people like seeing a cohesive and a beautiful theme and I know it can be kind of, I've noticed that people divide into two cups what some people they absolutely love seeing beautiful themes but who really doesn't everybody loves seeing beautiful if you want to admit it or not you are going to enjoy seeing a beautifully curated theme whether it's a theme of different colors like going from pink to gradually to yellow to green to blue or i've seen season generated themes i've seen or you can have the simple theme of the grids like for example light color next to black, a dark color light dark light dark and then you get kind of this like checkered pattern and um, but of course it takes time and it doesn't happen like that by mistake there's a lot of planning and some feeds are harder to plan than others um, for example light dark light dark in my opinion is probably the easiest um, but you still have to plan it you can't just be like you sometimes you have this urge to post something but you have to if you have a theme going you gotta really think in the long run is this gonna affect it oh, or of course you can be just easy going and not care about a theme and that's actually so much easier for you if you have people who are willing to follow you if you have great content and people just want to they don't care how you package something if what's in the package is already really good so anyways back to preview and back to your add-in photos now and now let's add the borders you gotta select the photo you want to edit you click on the circle thing and then up on top you will see there's three lines so click on those and uh, so what i do then is you actually have to crop your pictures for example, if you're going to have feed like my feed that goes a thin, thin portrait, thin landscape, thin portrait, thin landscape, you will need certain types of photos. For example, uh, certain photo orientations. For example, you can't really get a landscape photo from a portrait. If you've taken your picture like this and you want 
gonna post it like this you could crop it down a lot but then if you were going to take a picture of something that's so wide and narrow why weren't you taking it landscape so you see I get if you are taking a portrait photo or something that means it was supposed to be in portrait mode or that's what how you try to capture you wanted to capture something like tall not something long and wide so you would need to figure out and start cropping your photos and this is where it gets really messy and to be honest I don't think in a YouTube video it's it's really hard to show and that's why you have to just practice and the best thing you have to you can do is practice and see and then put it in preview so you can see sometimes I know is that the landscape sizes differ so sometimes you will have a photo where the frame will be this wide next one it's this wide then it's this wide so, and so then I realized that um, when you take a photo and you start cropping it through it preview you can make it in different widths and the frames can be cut down differently and you have to crop differently and stuff like that after a while you're just like you know what maybe it doesn't matter if my feet's not 100 percent equal maybe it's like 90 80 but i don't mind but so my, if you look closely my my pictures are not always all the right ratios but sometimes i keep in mind that there was one that's really wide and i tried to make another one that's like opposite it also extra wide but i've been doing this for a while so i now kind of i don't i just eyeball the crop tool and you just get used to it with practice but yeah it takes i have just so if i take a photo i have so many different like photos following it with different widths of uh, white borders so it gets kind of like really intense <laughs> at times where i wonder why am i doing this but to be honest i just love um seeing my feet i love thinking about it and i just i like the structure it gives me as i said however let's now let's finish going back uh, to how i well, i kind of said how we so basically okay so now that you've cropped, um, you have to go uh, move to the right two frames, and then there's a variety of frames you can choose. You can choose just a normal one, like a square frame is quite common. Uh, also, qu uh, quite easy to do if you think about it, because all you have to do is always crop your photos in squares, like a square format. The thing is, that means your image needs to fit in a square format. So, for example this is a wide shot in order for it to be a square only this area would be like shown which is fine because I'm the only person here um, you would be able to capture it in a square however if you had a photo of like three people here and you had to capture it in a square format with square borders you wouldn't be able to capture them unless they're like right here or something like just in my face <laughs> So, at first you're like, yeah, square, that's easy, but remember who has been on Instagram for a long time, Instagram used to have only square formats, and you've really had to cut down your photos hard, so, and how excited we were all with the possibilities of having wider shots. So, if your photos are square style, then, wow, great, it's much easier for you to just always have everything square and you have a really good eye for detail and um, composition but if not if you want to do uh, what my feed looks like so wide then portrait wide portrait then you gotta scroll past all these other frames which are also you should have a look at maybe you can find something interesting too Vela or Sol so I use well of when I have a portrait photo and I use soul when I have a landscape photo and I alternate and that's how I get the feed my feed now um, I wanted to also say a little bit if you are an artist and you're looking at it from an if you're considering to 
if you create fine artworks and if you're considering to do this feed so this theme with the portrait borders and landscape borders i wanted to just give you a little heads up of preview lowers when you add a frame or at least that's what i noticed maybe it doesn't do for other frames especially this one i think because it's cutting it down or i don't know what it's doing but it lowers the quality now when you are producing works of art of course you want every detail every ounce of your hard work to be featured and to be seen and so people can appreciate it and because you put in a lot of work i figured when i am posting pictures of my art where i want the details to be really crisp and clear i don't use preview anymore after because it reduces the quality and it makes my artworks look a bit blurry and kind of takes away from the all the hard work I put in so that's why I figured out another way to add white borders but it takes a bit more time and but to be honest I think it's worth it because you know it's if you think about it it's um, well now that I've gotten used to it it takes me like three more minutes to do it than uh, in doing it all in preview but the I am given an authentic experience of what my artwork is and I'm saying true to the artwork I'm saying true to myself but also if you are trying to sell your pieces online you need people to know how your art really looks like you can't sell them something first of all it's gonna be hard to sell grainy blurry pictures of your artworks and even if they do sell what if something happens and a person gets the artwork and sees that it's a bit different from what they expected hopefully it would be a good surprise because the photo was so bad but you never know you know so maybe the colors were off and they really needed that color so that's why i was i decided if i'm posting pictures of my art or something that's really important for the quality to be good i actually don't use preview but if i'm just as i said out and about or a bit more laid back about the photograph or the photograph does not look like the qual quality gets actually that reduced on preview then i use it so let me know if you want me to do another video where i show that other program i do for my artworks where i want the quality to remain as good as possible for the details to be strong and i hope you like this video and it was really helpful for you